HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will show you how you can have access to dozens of magazines electronically, courtesy of the Hopkinton Library. We take you back to Camp Bailout to show you some more scenes from the Firefighters and Emergency Medical Services Summer Camp for Girls, and we will tell you about some great news regarding the Bay State school system. But first, I caught up with Water Sore Manager Eric Cardi, who filled HCAM News in on what is happening with the DPW and the future of the water tanks in front of Hopkinton Middle School. This is actually the original site of the town's first wells. Uh, there's two buildings located here on the property that were dug when the water system was first started in the, uh, the late 1800s. And uh, this was the first tank or, uh, sorry, this is actually the second tank uh, that was located on the property. There was an original tank over by where the, uh, the school booster pump station is right now uh, that was established when these wells were developed, and that was the original storage for the downtown area. It was the only area that was serviced uh, by town water. Uh, back then, that's where everything was centralized, and, and there wasn't enough uh, uh, people on the outskirts of town at that time to, uh, to extend the water, which they eventually did. Uh, so this tank here was built in, in 1922, a uh, steel riveted water tank. This one holds uh, about 320,000 gallons. And for the most part, it's in pretty decent shape. Um, you know, we're looking to uh, take this one down. The maintenance uh, work that needs to be done on it at this time is just uh, being looked at in terms of what the, the best effective uh, cost is for the town. And really we, what we need is to add an, a new tank here that has additional storage. Uh, this one is not quite sufficient anymore with the growth that we've had in town. Uh, we have the, the other tank over here that was built in uh, 1966. That one holds 1 1.5 million gallons. And um, we're doing evaluations on that one as well, uh, seeing what we need to do in terms of uh, cleaning it and any spot repairs that uh, need to be done to that. Uh, one interesting, interesting note on this, the smaller tank was uh, it uh, originally didn't have a cover on it. Now, back in the old days, uh, they didn't have the DEP <laughs> that was uh, enforcing all the rules and regulations. So this one, there's local rumors of uh, some of the neighborhood kids actually swimming in this <laughs> before the top was on it. And I guess they hope they, if they heard the fire horn downtown that they quickly got out <laughs> in case the, uh, the hydrants were opened. Uh, but eventually in the, uh, I think it was the early 60s, uh, that the top was finally uh, put on this one. So I understand that uh, some things are going to be happening uh, with these tanks coming up. Can you explain what's going to be happening with them? Sure. Uh, right now we've had the money appropriated and we're having our engineer Weston Sampson uh, do some modeling and testing on it and to see uh, what the, the best procedure for us to go forward with is. And right now the indication is that, uh, to, like I earlier indicated, to take the smaller tank down, uh, use a same height tank. Um, we have another tank location over on West Main Street and actually our base elevation where we're standing right here is actually 10 feet higher than the elevation on West Main Street. If you, when you're driving towards West Main, it's kind of an optical illusion. Uh, when you're going up Bear Hill, you would think that that one is the, uh, the higher of the two, but that's actually 10 feet uh, lower elevation. So the, the tank itself is a 10 foot higher tank than these. These are 60 feet and that one's 70 feet. So that keeps the hydraulic gradient of the, uh, the town in line. Uh, so with the modeling being done, uh, we're going to get a recommendation from uh, Weston and Sampson on what we should end up doing with uh, the older tank here. Okay, and uh, do you have any ideas uh, what they're going to say that you should do with it? Um, any thoughts about what they'll probably recommend? Uh, right now, the uh, preliminary design is going to be for probably just replacing this with a, a wider tank that gives us more storage, more volume and that will help us uh, in our maintenance work. Right now we're not really able to take this tank down and offline uh, due to the uh, issues it would cause with pressure and then also uh, you know, fire support and keeping up with demand. So having a, a bigger tank uh, right next to it will give us 
some leeway when we can take one tank offline and be able to do the required uh, maintenance on them. So that's what they're looking at right now. Like I said, they're still early in the study, so something else might come out of it, but that seems to be um, the way that they're going to be following right now. And I understand it's been a very busy summer for the DPW and water and sewer with a lot of construction going on? It has, it has. Yeah, there's construction just uh, all over town and we've been uh, busy trying to keep up with the demands of uh, you know, doing inspections for the water mains, uh, getting them filled and then all the other associated work that goes along with the construction, um, along with now that we're into the uh, uh, high use season, that, that keeps us busy as well with just our general maintenance work and upkeep of the wells. All right, so how are the water levels right now? Are they doing okay? Right now, we're, we're doing okay. Uh, we've had just enough rain uh, that's kept us at an okay level. We're starting to see the groundwater levels drop. You know, we had, uh, I think last week or a week and a half ago, we had uh, one little over an inch storm that helped uh, a little bit, but now it's been fairly dry again. So you know, we still ask people to always make sure they're helping to conserve. Uh, we try to get the word out there that your lawns really only need one inch of water a week to uh, stay green. <laughs> And, you know, if everyone adheres to the watering rules and regulations which are imposed on us by the DEP, uh, you know, then that will help us make it through the summer without any, uh, hopefully, any significant uh, issues in terms of uh, supply. And, of course, there's the water barrels, or the rain barrels that uh, you mentioned uh, in a new segment a few months ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for that plug. We uh, partnered with Western Nurseries, and, um, you know, quite a few people did take advantage of that program, and I know uh, a lot of people are using them, and that helps, you know, be able to do your watering of the flowers and other things that are close to the house and uh, helps, you know, save the town's uh, resources for, you know, the other daily pertinent needs as well. All right, well, thanks a lot for the update. All right, thank you, Tom. Certainly, some very interesting history behind the water tanks at the middle school. It should be interesting to see the changes to come. Hey, Massachusetts, congratulations. This week on our website, hcam.tv, we shared a wallethub.com study which ranked Massachusetts as having the number one overall school system in the country. The well-known ranking service used 13 categories to rank all U.S. states and territories. In the study, Mass ranked second overall in school system quality and first in school safety. To see more about the study, visit our website, hcam.tv. We now turn our attention to Camp Bailout, an emergency medical services and firefighters camp for girls aged 12 through 19, which doubled the number of participants this summer. HCAM News was on the scene to talk to some of the Camp Bailout students. What's been your favorite activity so far at, at this camp and are you having a good time? Well, I'm having a good time and my favorite activities have been the field trip and rappelling. My favorite was doing the rappelling in the sewer because I never got to like go get put down in the sewer, so it was really fun. Uh, my favorite is rappelling and this camp is really fun. You got to take a trip over to Boston. Uh, could you talk about the trip a little bit? What was that like? Well, it was really interesting. It was a lot of fun. I liked going on the boat. Yeah, I liked going on the boat and seeing the canines because it was fascinating for them searching the bags without even opening it. She said what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, today was propelling. Uh, were you nervous when you, when you were coming down there or did you feel confident that you would have no problem? Well, I came last year and I did it, and I was a little nervous. I was more nervous from the second story for some reason that, more than the third story. I was nervous for both of them because I'm scared of heights, so it was like the ground was moving. Um, I was comfortable with it because I just feel like I'm going down a rock wall. All right, now would you do this camp again next year if you could? Yes, definitely, yes. How are you girls enjoying the camp so far? Are you, you having a good time? Yeah, it's my first time being here actually. <laughs> it's my first time too. Yeah. It's been really fun so far. Yeah, it's really cool. And Sarah. All right, so uh, <laughs> what's uh, been your favorite activity so far? We'll start over here. Uh, probably going to be repelling, which, was, which happened yesterday. Uh, you repel actually from like this um, tall building, and then uh, they also there's a hill up there with the hole in the ground, and they just repel down there. It was really cool. Same thing as her. I like the repelling. <laughs> yep. 
All right, now uh, would you come back to the camp if you had the chance? Um, yeah, I would. It's definitely a good experience for a young woman to, you know, like with leadership and realize, like, you know, there's more to, like, you can you can do more stuff just because you can do more stuff because you're not, like, a male, you know, so. Yeah, I definitely would because it's been a great experience so far. It's a lot of fun. I think a lot of girls should get into it because it shows what women can do. I agree with her totally. Um, yeah. <laughs> What's been your favorite part of the camp so far? What's been your favorite drill? The confined space going into the manhole. It's been a lot of fun because you see what type of rescues they do. Um, mine is going into Boston, which we did on Wednesday, and like seeing what really goes on, like behind the scenes, kind of like for like for like their drills and like stuff. What are some of the things you've learned in this camp? Um, I've learned that. Um, the fire triangle, it's a different word, but that's what we were using that day. And I've learned a lot more throughout the week, and it was a really awesome opportunity to go to this camp. I never knew that there were different kinds of fire hydrants. I always thought there was just one for the same fire, but I didn't know that, so that's something I learned. All right, now would you come back to the camp if you had the opportunity? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Do you have a favorite instructor? Sarah. Sarah. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You like them all, right? Yeah. You can see a lot more from Camp Bailout on our website, hcam.tv. Also, we will have more from Camp Bailout coming up on this edition of HCAM News. Also coming up on HCAM News, we'll give you a look at a cool new magazine service you can find at the Hopkinton Library, and Courtney will get you up to date with what is coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the H Camp Studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting H Camp to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. Recently, the Hopkinton Public Library implemented some new magazine services, which allow you to access a number of magazines from your personal computer, smartphone, or tablet. Adult Services Librarian Heather Backman explains. I'm Heather. I'm the Adult Services Librarian at the Hopkinton Library. And we've just introduced two new ways that you can get magazines from the library on your phone or your tablet or your computer to read at home or wherever you happen to be. This is especially great because we don't actually let people take the most recent copy of a magazine home from the building. They're, they're too uh, much in demand. So this way you can get the most recent edition of any magazine that we carry electronically. And we have two ways to get these. Um, the first way is called Zinio Magazine. So if you start at our webpage, which is hopkintonlibrary.org, you want to click on Books, Audio, Digital. And then you want to click on Digital Books and Audio Catalog. And if you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see Zinio Magazines under Online Magazines for Digital Devices. And you can go in. You'll need your library card to create a new account. Once you've created an account, you can just log in. So here I am, and now I've logged in, and uh, we have 50 different popular magazines available through this collection. So you can browse around, you can find whichever one you like, and once you've found one that you want to read, you can just click on it to open it up, check it out, and you can immediately start reading it on your computer screen if you want to do that. So it'll open it up in this 
nice reader format and you can page through it. And you have all sorts of other options and settings on the side that you can play with and do things. And it looks pretty nice and it's uh, zoomable and quite easy to read. You can also uh, bring that magazine right onto your tablet or your phone if you have one. So I'm going to do that now. And to do this, you're going to need to install the Zinio app. Um, and there are very specific instructions on how to get access to our collection through this app. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, so we do advise people to either contact us or really read the instructions on our website carefully. But once you've got it set up, I don't know if you can see, but this is my tablet in the Zinio app, and it's already got the magazine I've just checked out here. So you just have to tap it, and it will download. All right, so then you can see you've got you can just page through it right on your tablet. Um, you can, this doesn't work as well on a smaller tablet, but you can make it go, if I have, I have screen rotation enabled. But you can also get a two page spread. There we go. Um, and you can do things with your settings. You can see the whole table of contents. You can get magazine articles in plain text, so it's easier to read them sometimes that way than on the page. It's a really nice, quick, and easy little uh, way to get magazines. And the great thing about Zinio is that once you have this issue on your computer, on your device, you have it forever. There's no checkout period. You can keep it as long as you want and just delete it when you're done or if you want to clear up some space on your device. The other option that we have for getting downloadable magazines works just the same way as you may have already seen if you use OverDrive to download ebooks or uh, downloadable audiobooks from the library. And again, you can find that right under Books Audio Digital on our homepage, and then under Digital Books and Audio Catalog. And it's this first thing up here search our digital catalog. To use the OverDrive version of downloadable magazines, you will need the Nook or the Nook app, which is available for iOS, Android, and Windows 8. And to find them, you simply use the advanced search on the site to do a format search for Nook periodicals. And that will bring up everything that we have. It's a different list than what is on Zinio. Um, and unlike Zinio, these do have checkout periods. So they will, you'll have a certain amount of time to read them, then they will get returned automatically, just like anything else that, that you would check out through OverDrive. But this is also a really great way to get access to magazines on the go, uh, to read the most recent stuff without having to be in the library. And we're very pleased to be able to offer it. We hope people will take advantage of it. And of course, as always, if anybody has any questions, if you don't know how to do this, if you need help, we're here. You can call us, visit us, or email us, and we'd be happy to get you set up. Earlier in the newscast, we heard from a few students who attended camp bailout in Ashland. Hopkinton firefighter Sarah Jordan, one of the instructors for the camp, was kind enough to talk to us about some of the drills she showed the students. She was joined by former participant of Camp Bailout and now member of the Fire Explorers program, Carly Flone. This is my first year helping out. I did this camp about two years ago as a camper. Um, definitely things have changed. Um, just seeing, uh, you know, from a different perspective of how well things have run and, you know, the different types of things that we do. And it's definitely great to see of how much I've learned. Um, you know, learning ladders, hoses, hydrants, and team building has been a great experience to see from a different view. All right, now Sarah, this is your second year um, vol uh, volunteering with this camp. Uh, can you talk about how the second year is going? And it seems uh, like there, there's a higher enrollment this year, a lot more students than last year. Uh, there is. Uh, so last year we had 12 or 13 uh, girls at camp. This year we've got 26 or 27. Um, this year we've focused a lot on team building. Um, we actually took a field trip to Massport on Wednesday, which is the first year we've actually uh, gone off and done anything. So the girls got to see 
how a different fire department is run, you know, strictly at the airport, how they operate. So the girls seem to like it. Uh, we've done some more uh, relay races this year, and we did uh, some ladders, some engine work. We went a little bit more in depth with the engine work this year. So the, uh, one of the Ashland uh, female officers came in and talked to the girls, showed them, uh, showed them the cruiser. They had a they had a good enjoyment with that. We taught CPR and uh, basic first aid um, a couple of days ago. So she's been all around pretty good this year. They did some rappelling yesterday and uh, confined space rescue. All right, now um, when you participated in the camp, did, did it, is that what made you want to get into the Explorers program? It is, yes. Um, I mean, I also had my brother and my dad a part of the Explorers. My dad was an advisor, my brother was an explorer. So that was also another push, but I never really actually got to go and see what they did. I just knew about it. So when I came to the camp and I did all the firefighter work, I did, you know, learn, learning about all the different parts of firefighting, it definitely pushed me into wanting to join the Explorers when I was old enough. How are you liking working with the students? I love it. I love teaching what I know, and I love, you know, just, you know, watching them grow and learn just like I did, and it's definitely a great experience. All right, and um, Sarah, so after last year, th did you just say to yourself that I have to come back and do this again? I did. Last year was, it was such an experience for me, um, seeing how it motivated the girls are and how they did develop the first day. They're all very shy, they stay in their groups, and then by the end of the week, you got different girls stepping up, being leaders. You can see their confidence is a lot better with everything they do. Um, I just wanted to get more females into into our service and show them, you know, you guys can do what we can do and you guys can do what all, you know, the guys can do and just try to get them a little bit more confident in themselves as, as females in, in the world and growing up. And now over here you're showing them some of the, the fire hose. Uh, can you talk about some of the lessons that they learned uh, while you're showing them that? Um, so a big thing here is uh, teamwork. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on the hose and the hose is heavy so they have to work together as a team um, to handle the hose to move the hose um, that way nobody nobody gets knocked down they don't lose the hose um, it shows them that you know every everybody on the engine has has a responsibility you can't get water to the the truck without one person on a team you can't put the fire out without somebody on the nozzle and it takes everybody to to move all as one one group together you can find more from Camp Bailout on our website, hcam.tv. Also, be on the lookout for a special edition of HCAM News Focus as we take you inside the fifth year of the camp. For more on what's coming up on the HCAM channels, we turn things over to our promotions coordinator, Courtney, who has our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, August 1st at 1.30 p.m., it's Ashland Legion Baseball versus Natick. And at 3.30 p.m., it's the final game of the season with Ashland Legion Baseball versus Newton. At 5.30 p.m., Times Square performs cover versions of favorite songs from all eras of music on a new Concerts on the Common. On Monday, August 3rd at 8.30 p.m., learn about vision problems people over 40 may face and what steps anyone can take to protect their eyes on a new physician focus. Sometimes cataracts can have a genetic component, so yeah. you might have a family history. Sometimes medications, we often see people taking steroids for other things. Steroids can accelerate the growth. On Tuesday, August 4th at 6.30 p.m., the Elementary School Building Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, August 5th at 11.30 a.m., Founding Father John Adams must convince the 13 colonies to vote to pursue independence in the ESL presentation of 1776, a musical. On a new All About Hopkinton at 8 p.m., Tim Kiernan discusses how he prepares for each day as a principal and what he enjoys about the job. Making sure that our kids feel safe at the classroom level, you know, and thinking about something a little bit beyond the, the, the building level, at mm -hmm. that one-to-one -one inter, interpersonal relationship level uh, is critical to what we do as well. There's a new way to sign up for the HCAM Insider now, so if you would like to subscribe, visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates. You can even sign up to receive our daily news updates too. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. 
Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care, be well, and may your August be wonderful.